Morning. Morning. Much rest last night? Yeah. We I got a good sleep. We always sleep well, so uh, back at it again this morning. Back at it. Uh, reflection on last night's performance, was it just more pleasing to pick up that win, get up three points to the top of the group? I think you might do it a disservice when you consider the opposition. So sometimes you know, people think it's easy to win these games, but let me tell you, unless you're in the, in the seat and you're taking the team, uh, there's no easy games in Europe. I've never found an easy game in Europe yet. I think this year we've probably our toughest group we've had and proved to be the case last night. Very tight game, but uh, fortunately we got the we got the victory. Any injury problems after the game? Or not known I'd, I really don't know yet. Your early press conference makes it really difficult for me to to give you any any update. And a weekly or almost like a every two day update on the situation with Kurt Zuma. How's he recovering? Uh, We'll, we'll have another look this morning, as I said. Not really the chance to get in and assess and hear what the medical staff have said yet, but hopefully uh, hopefully he's making some progress and getting closer to playing. On Sunday, it'll be your seventh game in 22 days. Now, I know over the last couple of seasons playing in Europe, your side's maybe becoming accustomed to playing those midweek and weekend, but does it feel like this has been maybe one of the toughest periods of fixtures? I don't think it's been any different than what we've had in recent seasons, but... Ultimately, it's still very difficult, you know, to to be playing the games regular is is uh, tough. But look, we'd rather have it. I think everybody wants to be in Europe if you can do it. One of the European competitions, if you can be in the Champions League, you you might be fortunate and get a, a Tuesday, Tuesday, Saturday, or a Tuesday, Sunday game. Uh, in this competition, you can only ever have Thursday and you can only ever have Sunday really for the for the game. So it makes that that sort of difficult thing to deal with. But We've dealt with it pretty well in the last couple of years. It's not easy in the Premier League games, but uh, but we're giving it a really good go. Focus on Sunday and Forest. Does it make this game maybe an extra element to it that makes it that much more crucial going into an international break afterwards to pick up three points, especially because of the run you have you've had in the Premier League recently? I think every game is really important. You have to win, so you can only win the the, the one in front of you. We all will have to try and play well. Not as far as a decent team. They had a great result last week, so we're going to have to have to play well. Yes, we'd like to improve on a couple of recent results, but uh, but in between that, you know, it's easy to forget that we beat Arsenal in the cup as well in the midweek, and then we've just had a win last night. So, so when you put all those games together, you know, of course the Premier League will always be the games we look for. But there's also been some very good wins in the mi the mix of that as well. And Steve Cooper. Tell me a little bit more about the job you think he's done at Forest because obviously going to second season in the Premier League, there, there's always been this talk of a second season syndrome, not always the case, but he's done a remarkable job. Isn't he? He's done a brilliant job. Uh, don't think I was surprised by it, but uh, but overall he done great last year to, to keep them up and look, they look as if they're building on it this year. They've, they've bought a lot of players over the last two years and kept moving the team on, so I think they've done a good job, yes. Well, yesterday, Gareth Southgate announced his England squad, a call-up for Jared Bowen, not a call-up for James Ward-Prowse. Does that surprise you at all that he's been omitted again? I say this every time the internationals come around. I think that Gareth is doing an unbelievable job for England. I think England have got, I'm saying sadly a little bit, being a Scotsman, but uh, I think England have got such a good group of players, so many players to choose from, really good players. James is one of them and he's competing and he has to try and keep pushing. So uh, I'm disappointed that he didn't get in, but Gareth's the manager and picks his squads very well. What's been the players' reaction? You saw the reaction on the pitch last night, you know, setting up the goal uh, beautifully, but what's his reaction to missing out? Because I can imagine it's a real ambition of his, particularly in the year where you've got the Euros at the end. Yeah, what he's got to do is keep playing well, keep making it difficult for the manager, keep, you know, been involved in assists, scoring goals, which he has done since the start of the season. So if he does that, there might be a moment come around where Gareth says, hey, I'm going to give him another go. But meanwhile, not, you've still got to play well. And he's and he's doing well for us, and he's he's a great lad. He's settled in really quickly. So from that point of view, we're really pleased. But from, from my side, I hope that he keeps scoring and playing well for West Ham. Finally, from me, I know this week the LMA have been in discussions with the PGMOL. I just wanted, I guess, to hear your thoughts of where you think VAR, the process around VAR, whether it's the appointment of a VAR specialist, could be improved upon 
in this league? Well, my opinion doesn't really matter in what I say. You're just going to ask all the managers a similar question, I'm guessing, because of the VAR. I think we're all pretty disappointed with lots of aspects, but I think we're also very much uh, in favour of trying to make it work. I just think that we've all been disappointed with, with probably a lot some of the officiating as well this season. Uh, but look, my my single opinion wouldn't wouldn't matter a jot, and uh, they'll do they'll do what they need to do. But do you think your opinion, you know, for us certainly sitting here, I can imagine we're all probably thinking your opinion does matter. You know, somebody who's in the game managing a Premier League yeah. club, fans are looking and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, your opinion does it holds a lot of value. I yeah, a lot of people probably interested here. Yeah, but when we're putting it over, it's not getting much clout at the other end. So. You can ask us as a journalist, and, and we are thinking that we're not getting an awful lot of back when we're giving it back to the to the officials or to, to whoever. We would, I said last week in the press conference, I think there's been a couple of big incidents which have been highlighted, but it's mainly probably the top clubs. It's as if the, we don't think that some other clubs uh, don't have the same uh, problems, same VAR problems, same decision makings, and it doesn't get the same highlight. So I think we're all pretty disappointed by some of it what we've been getting back. So do you think it's a case of because the, some of the bigger clubs, i.e. last week Arsenal making a bit of noise about it, do you think that's what's going to take, what it's going to take for changes to be made? No, because we don't want to do it because the managers will be fined uh, for speaking out a turn uh, and you're asking me questions which I could get fined for speaking out a turn. So. You're asking us mainly after the games, for 20 minutes after games, you're asking us questions which should actually put us in trouble uh, about referees or about officiating. So most of the managers don't want to say anything about it because we know that we're we're locked down by... So I nearly hope that the journalists in the, the, the sky, for example, would, would uh, respect the managers and don't put them in those positions. But uh, if clubs or managers choose to have an outburst, then that's their choice, they can do that. Understand though why you know questions are asked at that time straight after a game, and you know we can sit and we understand the emotions yeah. that you know footballers managers go through during those moments. But for fans, we want to hear the emotional side of managers. We, we want yeah, that I think. And yeah. Does there maybe need to be some understanding from the authorities that you know emotions are high and that should be taken into consideration? Yeah, but we can't do it. So you don't get the, the manager's true emotions. We have to be defensive. We have to sit back. We don't We don't give a lot of our true feelings. But that's because you ask us questions which we know we're going to be fined or we're going to be charged with, so we can't do it. So I don't. I think you're taking that up with the wrong people. I think you should take it up with the FA, for example, and, and speak to them about if you want more from the managers and their honest opinions on VAR or their honest opinions on, on referees' performances. But... You know, to keep continue asking the managers, I think that's you're not going to get anywhere because we're not going to come up with anything else. And now and again, you'll get outbursts, and maybe that's what you want. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Sarah, DLP. Hello, um, congrats on your win. Thank you. Um, Mohamed Pudis has obviously had a great start with West Ham. He's had two goals in two league starts. Is there anything about his game that you think right now that still needs a bit of polishing? Yeah, I think he's still getting used to us. We're still getting used to him a little bit. Uh, his overall play at times has been bits of his play has been very very good. I'm looking for him to be more creative, you know. But again, he's really just settling into the Premier League, and I think he's settled in really really well. Like we brought in some really good players last year, and they took much much longer to settle in than Mo. Mo's made a big impact with three or four goals, maybe I don't know how many exactly, but he's had a few goals for us. Uh, so he's he's certainly helped, and he's. Uh, I think the crowd and everybody's well aware of how well he's doing. Fantastic. It is early, but the time's going quick. Of course, there's Africa Cup of Nations in January, and you do have a few players that probably will go to their club. Have you thought ahead of, of what you want to do in that transfer window at the moment? Uh, we, we've actually talked about it a couple of times because obviously we've got three or four players possibly away, depending on who's called. So it's something, but I don't think it'll necessarily make us go out and buy more players if, if that's what you're alluding to. I don't see as being that. I think we'll need to work out exactly how long we, we think the players, what games they might exactly miss because of when they're away, etc. But it's always a difficult time when you're losing players uh, to the African nations, it really is. Um, you've not won in your last four league games. You've had uh, three losses, you drew one, but 
but they haven't exactly been bad performances. Do you think it's just been quite unlucky as a group of time? I think we started the season really well. And I think we, we got some great results, which gave us a, a really good platform. I think there's there's some other circumstances which might get involved in. For example, I think all the teams we've played have had weeks to, a week to prepare. We've not had it. So it's an easy stat to throw out. But I think if you if you look at the other bits in between it, we beat Arsenal in the Cup. We've just beaten Olympiacos in the Cup. So uh, your stat is correct, but it's a little bit one-sided and there's a little bit of it where you've got to recognise that there's been other games played in between that as well.